Hello there folks, hope you're all keeping well. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Scotland, but it's also a beautiful sunny day for Scottish rugby as we have five, yes, five representatives in the Test 23 for the first test of the 2021 Lions Tour against South Africa. That is more Lions than we've had in the Test matches of the last five tours combined and the most Lions we've had in a Test Series match uh, since 1997 which of course was against South Africa and famously the Lions won that series which hopefully, fingers crossed, that is a good omen. But anyway, uh, congratulations to the five Scots picked, three of them in the starting lineup. Of course, the starting lineup uh, with Stuart Hogg, Duane van der Merwe, and Ali Price, and on the bench, uh, Hamish Watson and Rory Sutherland. So, congratulations to them. I'm just going to talk about this selection. It was basically uh, what that um, Times rumour said it would be. The only exception to that is uh, Liam Williams uh, being among the replacements instead of Ian Henderson. Um, and they've gone for, similarly to South Africa, they've gone for the 5-3 split on the bench, um, which I think is not really a bad thing. Um, I have a feeling, though, um, that Liam Williams has been put there more for um, security. Um, like if uh, Stuart Hogg maybe has a bad game or something, fingers crossed that won't happen. Um, but um, on the whole, yeah, I think it is a good team that uh, Gatlin's picked. Picked mostly on form in the tour. Um, I gave the analysis of it in my last video, of course, um, about each of the players. Um, but I'm going to go through um, the reverse this time. I'll go from 1 to 15, starting with the front row. Um, obviously, Wynne Jones, um, Luke Cowan Dickey and... Tag Furlong. Tag Furlong was always going to be the first choice tight head prop and how he's played when he's played in this tour um, has been very good and he's obviously fully merited to um, be the tight head prop here again. Uh, Luke Cowan Dickey without question the form hooker but I, as I said in my last video I thought Jamie George might get the nod there. J Jamie George isn't even in the 23 because I thought Gatlin might favour experience a bit more but he's gone with form on Cowan Dickey and Wynne Jones number one. Wynne Jones of course scored a try against the South African A's uh, last week and he had an all right game then but uh, this is going to be a big test for him so it'll be interesting to see how they go as a front row combination. Uh, just give me a wee second. In the second row it's of course um, as predicted, uh, Atoje and Alan Wynne jones of course, um, partnering up again after their 2017 tour. Alan Wynne jones as uh, can't state enough, absolutely remarkable, dislocates his shoulder and comes back in 18 days and um, plays very well when he came off the bench against the Stormers last week. Obviously, this Saturday is going to be um, a stiffer test for him physically, so hopefully he'll come through that, but I think he is more than capable, as he's shown uh, time and time again, more than capable of leading the line and with Maro Atoji alongside him, of course, an excellent ba balance there, um, especially at the breakdown. I think both very capable of causing the box a lot of problems there. Atoji um, and uh, Courtney Laws, that's just moving on to the back row. Courtney Laws, of course, playing six. I mean, you've got three key line-out options there in Atoji, Alan jones and Courtney Laws, but I think Atoji and Courtney Laws, the two players in the pack that have been picked to um, really have the capability of knocking um, their uh, fellow op their opposite numbers uh, in the box pack uh, backwards with their tackles. Um, not that the other forwards can't tackle at all, far from it, but just um, in terms of consistently, it's consistency, as I said in the last video, um, like the sort of just knocking the box back consistently, both uh, Atoji and Laws are very capable of doing that, and I think that's a big reason why they are both picked in this team. Um, Gatlin, of course, going for uh, Curry over Watson at seven. Tom Curry had an excellent game against South Africa A last week, and I think it is a good shout. I mean, obviously, you know, big, strong player, like, you know, works works hard around the pitch, uh, very good in the breakdown, of course, and very effective, and I think he has definitely got it in him going up against um, Saya Khaleesi, who, of course, is back for South Africa after... Uh, going through COVID, getting a positive COVID test and going through the isolation period. Um, but hopefully he's okay now because that'll be a very fascinating battle between those two in the open side flanker positions. Uh, Jack Conan at eight, of course, um, one second. Of course, he's been uh, picked um, because he's been the form eight of this tour, really. Uh, I think it's hard to argue with that. Um, I thought 
I think many folk thought that uh, Falatau was going to be the one picked, but Jack Conan's form has been excellent and he's really proved himself. He had a very good game against the Stormers last week, of course, so um, you can't argue that he definitely deserves to be there. Uh, so well well done to him. Um, and obviously, uh, quite interesting because I thought um, that Sam Simmons, I don't think he's shown his very best on this tour so far when he's had the chance, but I mean, going on form, you have to say um, Conan definitely deserves it. Uh, so that is the pack there at half backs. Um, again, one could say um, that it's a bit of a surprise Ali Price has been picked ahead of Conor Money, but you have to say on form, Ali Price absolutely deserves it because um, he's been the best number nine. I mean, last week he definitely showed that the game. Um, he was showed he was capable of speeding up the game, which um, I think he's been a bit inconsistent with for Scotland over the past couple of years. So I'd like to see him play like that more for Scotland, more consistently, because um, I think he is a capable player, but it just his consistency and his ability uh, to perform at key moments in matches, and sometimes I think he dawdles, he, he dawdles a bit too much for Scotland, and that was always my criticisms of him, but uh, for the Lions so far, he's really stepped up and deserves to be the nine, damn bigger. Of course, at 10, bigger had um, an excellent opener against Japan, and the other games he's, play, he's played in, um, he played well. I don't think Owen Farrell, pardon me, has done enough after his performance last week, which wasn't, wasn't bad, but he didn't really, um, you know, take the game by the scruff of the neck um, when the Lions needed to get back into it. He kicked his goals well, but I think in terms of uh, creativity and uh, um, I think Dan Bigger has been better, so he deserves to be the 10. Um, going into the centres, um, as I said in previous video, no surprise there at all. I think there's a very good variety in that centre um, partnership. Absolutely, I think... Um, uh, you know, Robbie Henshaw and Elliot Dealey, I think they have all the tools available to cause um, their opposite numbers. Of course, Dulandi and Am, a lot of problems there. So it'll be interesting, a very interesting battle that, and of course helpful with uh, Dealey's big left boot if the lines are under pressure and need to clear their lines. Um, and that's, um, you know, helpful obviously with uh, Hogg behind him as well. So the verse, the options are there. They've got the big left boot and the big right boot um, of Hogg if, if need be to clear their lines properly and to get, or to get some good field position. And um, of course on the wings, Josh Adams can consider himself very unlucky that he's not been picked at all because he's been playing very well this tour. Um, but um, I think uh, Duan van der Merwe has also been playing very well. And I think from an attacking point of view, you could give uh, Sheslin Colby um, a few headaches, I have to say. But the other way around, he needs to absolutely be on it defensively because um, if Sheslin Colby, if uh, Duan van der Merwe, Ber Duan van der Merwe, pardon me, doesn't get his positional sense right then Colby can absolutely run all over him so he needs to make sure he's like on it defensively throughout the whole game and um, obviously Watson on the other wing he played well against the South African A's last week and we all know what a capable player he is so I think he just about deserves it again Josh Adams can consider himself hard done by that he's not been selected uh, and then Stuart Hogg a full back which I think was the better option over Liam Williams one could argue that um, under the high ball, uh, Liam Williams is more solid, but I think Cog is very capable of being um, as solid at least. Um, and also, I think defensively, his game has come on a lot in recent times. But also, I think he's got a bit more of an X factor than Liam Williams does in attack, in that he can, you know, really set something out of nothing, and it can keep you'll keep um, the box defenders on their toes, especially in open space. Because as well as of, as I say, him being capable of kicking. Um, kicking a long uh, kick downfield and um, putting the box on the back foot he can also keep them guessing as um, to you know whether he's going to counter attack which he's very capable of of course and he's shown very good leadership in the games he had two games he has played on this tour so I think it's a good call there and the bench um, as I said I'm actually looking forward to seeing um, Ty Byrne and Hamish Watson come off the bench in the second half I think that's going to be and absolutely uh, fascinating to see, especially if it's a tight game. I really do believe that um, Watson and Ty Byrne have, are very capable of uh, causing the box, box a lot of problems up front. Of course, uh, 
uh, Byrne being um, the expert at the choke tackle and you know he's obviously a very physical character and a very quick player and Hamish Watson at the breakdown in his lower centre of gravity with his running with ball in hand I think that could be very interesting to watch in the second half if it comes down to that and that might make the difference who knows um, but yeah I mean <coughs> pardon me and uh, I think uh, also um, Rory Sutherland uh, picked over Marco Vinopola um, as the reserve loose head. I think Sutherland is underrated by many, and I wonder if it's because he's Scottish or not, but I think he's shown in the past couple of years just how much the Scottish scrum has improved since he became Scotland's first choice loose head. So he's absolutely uh, capable of coming on the second half and causing a few problems for the box pack in the scrum. But... It's going to be, of course, a very physical game. It's against the Springboks, so it always will be. But if the Lions are smart enough and also play with a bit of variety, which the selection of this team suggests, then I think they've got every chance. They can really, um, you know, make sure they move the big Springbok pack around, make sure they're solid at the set piece. They might not um, outdo them for 80 minutes at scrum time, but, I mean, as long as they're just getting some par some parity and uh, a platform to play from then I think they've got again I think they've got every chance and if they keep the ball as well I can see this uh, Springbok sign being prone to giving away penalties and also um, there's a lot of factors to consider with uh, the Springbok's preparation obviously with Covid cases there and um, how prepared are some of their players going to be um, and of course they don't have uh, Dwayne Vermeulen back at 8 they did, he wasn't able to get fit in time they've gone for uh, Kawanga Smith at 8 but still apart from that it looks a very 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 good team um, the majority of them of course were part of the World Cup winning side it's the whole back line it's the back line that won uh, that World Cup final um, and um, yeah so it's, it's going to be like I said it's going to be an absolutely uh, cracking contest I'm expecting a lot of big hits um, but I'm also hoping we see um, some good run in rugby as well and um, it's an enjoyable series I'm predicting as I said it's going to be 2-1 either way the series but this opening test I think actually the Lions have an excellent chance of taking it I think um, uh, they'll have learned a lot from the match last week against the Springbok A's but whether like you know just making sure they execute the, the mistakes they made then, uh, then a lot better in this match they've got every chance so um uh, my prediction, I think the Lions by one score for this first test. That's what I'm going to say. I'm sticking my neck out on that. Okay, uh, take, care of yourself, take care of yourself, folks. Pardon me, and I'll catch you later on.